Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. This is Curly Head Med Hair and for brief introductions, I'm currently a third year medical student and in today's video I'll be sharing with you guys how I used my USMLE Step 1 First Aid book throughout my second year of medical school as well as uh, modifications and annotations that I made throughout my second year to better help me study for the USMLE Step 1 throughout my year as well as during Dedicated. Um, before I get started, I'd just like to share with you all that I did initially buy the 2016 version because I purchased the book before my second year of medical school in 2016 and later purchased the more updated 2017 version when it came out in January. But I wouldn't recommend doing that just because it's not very cost efficient and you end up having two books with annotations in them. So in, in retrospect, that really doesn't make a lot of sense. So what I recommend doing is buying the most updated version that you can prior to your second year of medical school and then annotating any corrections and updates that are made to the newer edition book when it comes out. You can go to um, the first aid team website backslash updates and corrections and that lists an errata that has all the major and minor corrections and clarifications that were made to the last edition of the book. So I recommend doing that. So if you're not too familiar with the layout of first aid, you start off, the book starts off with like the general, high yield general principles sections that range from biochem to immunology, micro, pathology, pharmacology, and public health sciences, and ends with high yield organ systems. So what I did to make assessing the various sections of the book more easily was I put tabs indicating where each section was. I put the general principles tabs on the top and the organ system sections on the vertical side of the book. I feel like by doing that, it's easier to assess, access the various sections of the book rather than going to the table of contents every time to determine which page number each section begins. I feel like it's easier to flip through. Just put your finger there and open up directly to the sections and it's just easier, you know? And you can be fun and cute with it like I did. Get tabs that match the front cover of the book. Uh, just try to make the book as appealing as possible because you're going to be using the book for a year. You're going to have a love-hate relationship. So just make it as inviting and as accessible as possible. That brings me to my next point. Um, some of my classmates actually removed the original binding of the book. They went to like a uh, Staples or a Kinko's and they had the stiff binding of the book removed. They had them three hole punch it and then put like rings or put it in a ring binder. Just a more loose binding form that gives them more marginal space to write their notes in but also enables them to remove specific sections of the book so in cases where you have to go to for instance a doctor's appointment and you know you're going to be sitting in a waiting room for a while you can remove a specific section like you can remove the cardiovascular section and study while you're waiting for your doctor's appointment lastly and probably the most important tip I can give you guys is to purchase a first aid book before your second year and annotate, annotate, annotate the book throughout your second year as you're going through your blocks and your coursework, as you're going through Kaplan or UWorld questions. Annotate and add any additional information that you think will be beneficial to you for you to better understand all the concepts. Um, just studying first aid alone will not suffice. You will need Pathoma. You will need Sketchy Micro Farm or any other resource that will help you understand pathology and farm. And you will need re resources to reference to. And when you reference to those re resources, annotate any additional information that you deem necessary to the appropriate section of the book. And also, when you watch any videos on YouTube related to concepts and they present things like figures that you feel like will are helpful to understand in a concept. For instance, look at this figure right here for immunoglobulins. One resource that I use on YouTube was the Dirty USMLE channel. It's an amazing channel for mnemonics and I use this specific mnemonic and this specific um, diagram to help me understand um, immunoglobulins and I found it really helpful and I would highly suggest that you check out his channel because he has a lot of really good videos if you're the kind of person that benefits from mnemonics and find that those are useful to your studying. 
Um, so things like that, when you find figures that you find helpful, diagrams, draw them in your first aid book. Another reason that you should be annotating your first aid book throughout the school year and referring back to the book frequently is as you frequently go back to certain sections of the book, you'll start to develop a photographic memory. Like not everyone has a photographic memory, but when you see a page frequently enough, that layout will stick in your mind. And I found that like, for instance, this layout, when you look at it frequently enough, you will remember it on test day and you'll answer questions more easily when you're able to actually picture the, the information, you know? So I would recommend doing that as well. Frequently reading your first aid book throughout the school year and during dedicated. In addition to first aid becoming your best friend during second year and during dedicated, you also become really acquainted with post-it notes. Um, you don't always have enough room to write your notes in pages of first aid books, so I highly recommend stocking up in post-it notes prior to your dedicated study period. Here I'm showing you another way that I annotated first aid. Whenever I came across topics that seemed to be frequently tested either in Kaplan or in the UOLD question banks, I would write that into my first aid book because that let me know that, okay, this topic is important. So I made sure I wrote down my takeaway from the UOLD or Kaplan explanation into the book so that I knew that. I knew that by heart. Another thing I did, and guys, don't judge me for this. Whenever I got a question on a specific subject area, I would put the letter Q next to that title so that whenever I would go back to first aid later on and see that there were multiple Qs next to a subject heading, I knew to focus my time and review on that specific area. So as you can see, osteoporosis, I had at least four questions on that, probably even more. So I knew to focus my time on that as opposed to other less tested subject areas. So here's me showing you another example. This is a diagram of the pathogenesis of type one versus type two diabetes. And like I said, anytime you find a helpful diagram, put that in your first aid book. Now here's just a graph of the various forms of insulin for diabetes management. So if you're a, a visual learner, graphs might be beneficial to you. Whenever you find something helpful, add that into your first aid book. All right, y'all, that's all for this video. I'm going to leave a summary of everything that I spoke about in this video in the description box below. And I'll also be leaving the link to the first aid team website that I mentioned earlier that has the errata that lists all the major corrections, minor corrections, and clarifications to new editions of the book. I'll have the link for that down in the description box below as well. If you have any questions, need any clarifications on anything that I mentioned, or just are seeking any advice, don't be afraid to leave a comment down below or even private message me. I know a lot of people prefer that, and I answer all the messages that you guys send to me. Um, share this with your friends if you found this helpful, and good luck to all of you that are embarking on the journey to studying for the step one exam. I wish you the best of luck. Have a great day. Bye.